So OpenAI unveiled GPT-5 the last day and it has been taking internet by storm. And the thing is that OpenAI claims GPT-5 to be their best model at coding and also GPT-5 replaces all other previous models like GPT-4, O4, O3 mini and all that. And that's mainly because GPT-5 is now a unified model that comes with a built-in router. So let's say you're about to ask a complex question in which you want the AI model to think harder. Now, you no longer have to go ahead and select a specific model for that task. You ask the exact same question to GPT-5, but you just include think harder or let's say think for long in the prompt itself and now GPT-5 will intelligently think for longer before giving you an answer. And now GPT-5 comes in multiple variants like the GPT-5, GPT-5 mini and GPT-5 Pro. And if you use the Pro variant, you can think for longer. I mean, the AI model will reason for longer and come up with an answer. And now the interesting thing is that GPT-5 is already live in Code LLM and Chat LLM. And you can now go ahead and start using the same. And today in this video, I'm going to show you GPT-5 in action. And I'll go ahead and give a couple of sample prompts asking it to generate some code, do some reasoning and ask some tricky questions and we will analyze the results together. So here I have opened up chat LLM and if I click on this model selector on the top, I can now find GPT-5, GPT-5 Pro and GPT-5 Mini in this drop down selector right here. And now for starters, chat LLM is an all-in-one AI tool that lets you access almost all the leading and SOTA models from all AI providers out there. So if you click on this drop down menu here, not only can you access the latest GPT-5 models, but you can also access Opus 4.1, Sonnet 4, Gemini. I mean, you can access models from pretty much all the providers out there. And now to access chat LLM, all you gotta do is to click the first link in the description below and you will land on this page right here. Sign up for an account and you will see an interface something like this. And now if you're interested to learn more about exactly what GPT-5 is capable of, and if you want to take a look at all the benchmark results and stuff like that, you can head over to this release blog post on the open website and it has a lot of these stuff you know benchmark results and all that for geeky notes but in this video specifically i'm going to try the latest gpt5 model right within chat llm and also code llm and we will ask the ai to write some code and we will analyze the result and i've used gpt5 for some time now and the ui is that gpt5 is able to generate is far way better than any other previous models from open ai so first of all i'll go ahead and ask a simple question and the thing that you have to keep in mind is that you can select the model okay you have options like gpt5 gpt5 pro and mini and the thing is if you put gpt5 pro it means that it will think for longer maybe i can scroll all the way down in the documentation page and as you can see here we have gpt5 pro and it says for the most challenging and complex task we are also releasing gpt5 pro replacing open ai o3 pro a variant of GPT-5 that thinks for even longer. So if you have like a challenging questions or a tricky questions and you want to get answer, or let's say you want the AI to think longer to come up with a definitive answer for a question, you can simply select GPT-5 Pro. And now as I give a prompt to GPT-5 Pro model, the time it takes to think and come up with an answer is going to be on the higher side, of course, because the AI has to think for longer. So first of all, I'll ask a simple question, something like this, and it says, what is the best way to implement multi-tenant architecture in Next.js? And I explain mentioned think harder in here i mean in which ways we are using gpt5 pro so in that case it's not needed but in which ways as soon as i click on the send button watch this so as you can see it gpt5 pro is now in a thinking process and it will take some time for the ai to sort of come up with an answer and we will have to wait till it is done so i'll let you know how much time it took for the ai to sort of think about it maybe i'll show that the timer in the screen after editing this video but in which ways let's see it's been well over a minute and GPT-5 Pro is still thinking. Okay, let's wait anyways. So it took about one and a half to two minutes for the AI to come up with an answer. And it says there isn't a one single best pattern. And here it is mentioning all the code decision, data isolation, runtime infra, and it is even generating all these code samples. Okay, I just asked this question just as to show you the thinking process. Maybe I'll close this for now and maybe I can open a new thread. And this time around, I'll just select the GPT-5 mini model, okay? Maybe I can remove this keyword from here. And right now, watch this. And now maybe I can pull up the timer in here. And as soon as I click on this button right here, watch this. So it took less than 15 seconds or maximum 10 or 15 seconds to come up with an answer. So that is what I'm talking about. So the thing is that GPT-5 can now intelligently, or let's say, depending on the model that you select, one single model can now think for longer and it can do reasoning and all that depending on the prompt that you give. So that is the interesting thing. For example, if you want answer to a complex question or anything as such, you can just go ahead and select GPT-5 Pro model and it will go through an extensive thinking process before coming up with an answer. So that is one thing that I wanted to show you in the beginning. So 
GPT-5 primarily has three variants that is GPT-5, 5 Pro and Mini. I believe they also have a Nano model which is by far the cheapest version of GPT-5. So we are not actually using that. In which case, this is what I wanted to show. So depending on the question that you have, you can select a specific variant or include the keyword think harder or something similar in the prompt and then you can use GPT-5. So GPT-5 is now a unified sort of a model. It replaces O3 Pro, O4 and all that models. And next up, I'll go ahead and ask a tricky question. So what I'm planning is I'll go ahead and give a human palm with six fingers. And now I'll ask the AI to count how many fingers are there in the palm. And let's see if the AI is able to get it right. So for many models, it will still give you the answer five, even if the palm has six fingers. So that is what I want to do next. So for example, this right here is the image that I'm going to upload. All right. So here I have the image. I'll drag and drop it in here. It is now attached and I'll say how many fingers are there in this human hand. Oops. And I'll hit send and let's see. I think GPT-5 should be smart enough to count it. Well, GPT-5 closest to AGI and all that and it still say 5. Or could it be because I mentioned the keyword human hand. Maybe I could try it once more but without the keyword human hand. I could simply say how many fingers are there in the palm and I'll attach the exact same image again. So I haven't really explicitly mentioned it is human hand or anything. I just asked how many fingers are there in the palm and now I'll hit and send and now I'll hit send and let's see. Okay. It's thinking it still says there are five fingers visible on the palm while we clearly have six fingers. So this right here is the image that I uploaded. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six fingers and yet the AI was able to only detect five fingers. So it is a classic problem that pretty much all the AI models out there is facing and GPT-5 is no different. It is still not able to count six fingers in this image right here. So let's just go ahead and give a follow up prompt. But I see six fingers. Check again. Let's see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I just said, but I see six fingers check again, but it says I took another look. The hand in the image shows five fingers. Okay. GPT-5 is kind of dumb when it comes to these kind of things like visual things. Okay. It's kind of okay. And next up, I'll go ahead and give an interesting prompt. And this writer is the prompt and it says create a browser based OS in HTML. It should be the desktop page where users can perform basic actions like create a new folder, drag and drop icons, option to change the desktop uh, background, open terminal, etc add menu bar, icons, etc. Okay, so this is the prompt I'll give. And the interesting thing about using Abacus AI's chat LLM is that this is much more than a symbol or let's say regular your chatbot. Initially, I mentioned that you can use almost all latest models from all AI providers out there. Not just that, you can use the exact same platform to create images, write code, create PowerPoint, do deep research, and even generate video, like scrape URL, take screenshot, do video analysis, and a lot, lot more. In which case, since we are explicitly asking the AI to create code, or let's say write code, I'll click on this option called as code, and now the code mode is enabled. And now as soon as I send this message, it will now open up a canvas-like interface where it will write the code. So let's wait. I stopped it real quick because I made a mistake. So I was actually using GPT-5 mini, but I wanted it to use GPT-5 instead. I'll paste the prompt again, click on code, and I'll send it again. This is what I wanted. So let's wait. Now again, I asked it to write code and it is still thinking and yeah, there it goes. So GPT-5 have wrote like 500 lines of code till now and it is going to be extremely longer is what I guess. So let's wait anyways. And this is what GPT-5 managed to create and here I can find all these options like terminal. Okay, it opens up terminal. Let's put some random command. Oh, command not found. NPM. Okay. So basically it just splits command not found. In which ways here we have a terminal window and I can move it around. But the only thing that is missing is that all of these options does not really have an icon. So if it had all these icons, it would have been much better. In which ways I can open terminal. I can resize, make it bigger, smaller. I can close this one. So let me open settings. It gives us the option to select the background. Oh, I can change the background color like this, which is interesting. So I can select a file like this. And there you go. Here I have set a custom background and that works too. And here we have the browser. So let me open it up. There you go. Okay. Does anything happen if I put an address? Well, no. Okay. In which ways we... Huh. It is doing something in the background is what I guess. But 
okay for some reason it says refuse to connect but yeah here we have a browser and when we right click we get the option to create a new folder text note note and if i click on that one nothing happens refresh new folder yeah i can rename the folder we have the terminal background and all of that is in here and next step i'll open a new chat and try to create a simple browser based game using gpt5 so what i'll do is i'll go ahead and grab the prompt and enter the same in here so this right here is the prompt i'll give so basically this prompt is to create a single page flight simulator game and now i'll select the code mode and now gpt5 is selected and maybe i can put it in let's say gpt5 pro code mode again and i'll click send and i know it will take longer than ever but in which ways let's send this message and let's see the result and in the meantime i'll also show you code llm so for starters code llm is an id a powered id that you can locally install on your computer and you can access pretty much all the AI models out there and here i have already installed and opened up uh, code llm so this right here is code llm and maybe i can clear all of this so basically code llm is an id that you can locally install on your computer which is again based on vs code so you get all that extension support and everything else but the cool thing is that gpt5 is now live in code llm as well i can create a new thread and if i click on this model drop down menu towards the bottom i can now find gpt5 gpt5 mini and hopefully okay gpt5 high i can't find it in here but we have this gpt models up in here and not just that you can access all other models like sonnet 4 opus 4 let's say opus 4 thinking haiku grok 4 kimi k2 so all of that models is in here now basically the idea here is that it is a id that you locally have to install in your computer and still you can use gpt5 and now what i'll do is i'll clear all these files from my folder and after that i'll give another prompt to create a simple game so it says create a single page app in html file with the following requirements so basically we want to create a jumping pole runner game and now i'll click on the send option gpt5 is now selected and now we are explicitly asking code llm to use gpt5 to create a game in a single html file and now it will go through the thinking process write the code and show us the preview in which ways let's wait and let's just go ahead and check what chat llm is up to so so far it has uh, wrote about 300 lines of code and it is still going i'll see you after both of them are done and we'll analyze the results together so let's wait so here code llm has completed the same and i'll click on accept file and i'll try to open the index.html file first okay wow this is actually good look at that emoji bro like seriously but okay so the game is actually good we have that parallax effects the trees the mountains uh clouds and everything else is in here and every time i press the space button i can hear a sound and also the face of the emoji changes too but one big problem is that the obstacles are very big and even if i hit the space bar multiple times the ball isn't jumping high enough to get past the obstacles so that is one problem in which ways that's cool i mean i like the overall ui and everything else of this game and it has created a game exactly like what we asked for but we have to tweak it a little bit you can give a follow-up prompt and then ask the ai to modify it to make it such that the ball is able to jump past the obstacle but in which ways let's check chat llm and there you go here we have it ready is what i guess maybe i can put it in full screen and i'll click on start flight okay okay can i make it go all right so we have all that stuttering thing okay i can make my flight go up but all these movements of this uh, mountain and all these clouds make it very difficult to sort of focus but okay so it says crashed so the basic version of the game is indeed working and now i want to fix the stuttering of this you know mountains and also let's say clouds in the sky if you want you can give a follow-up prompt but this is actually good so this is a game that gpt5 was able to generate in just a single click and the interesting thing is that we have all this information like the score the fuel level the speed wind weather the sound effect and all that and we also have a lot of collectibles along the way right so when you go through the sky we have all these items that we can collect and it increases our point and also okay we are not supposed to hit these birds i guess okay and you can also collect fuels and everything else and we even have sound effect it's raining now okay so that's interesting earlier it was sunny and we did not really have any rains but now it says storm and here we have stormy weather with rains and all that yeah so this is the game so yeah so basically you can now use gpt5 to create 
really cool looking games and all that kind of stuff so gpt5 is now a unified model with a built-in router so you just need one single model to replace all these older models from open ai so i've been using gpt5 for some time now but it isn't anything like what sam oldman or the open ai team says it is as you saw it isn't still able to figure out that the photo that we uploaded had six fingers and not five fingers so that is one thing and again as far as ui side of things are concerned i mean of course claude is on a different level is what i would say but in which ways when compared with the ui that previous models from open ai was able to generate gpt5 is far 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 better is what i would say and again gpt5 is the best ai coding model from open ai and specifically from open ai so that is the keyword so so far OpenAI's biggest and the best flagship model for coding is GPT-5 is what they claim. So yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you in this video. Now we can use GPT-5 in chat LLM and code LLM and you can ask it to create anything you want. You can throw harder questions where it has to do some extreme reasoning and all that. So pretty much everything can be handled by GPT-5. So that is pretty much all I wanted to show you in this video. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you have, so make sure to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.